Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. Um, this is question number three from the January 2016 exam for Mechanics 1 uh, M1 International A Level at Excel. Here we have a question that's been requested by a student for me to answer. Question number three here A boy is pulling a sledge of mass eight kilograms in a straight line at a constant speed across rough horizontal ground by means of a rope. The rope is inclined at 30 degrees to the ground, as shown in figure one. The coefficient of friction between the sledge and the ground is one fifth. By modeling the sledge as a particle and the rope as a light inextensible string, find the tension in the rope. Okay, so let's just, um, I've got this like, little diagram prepared. Just a copy of it, just so we can see what's going on. So first of all, the mass of the sledge is eight kilograms. Okay, so that means we can put a force here, which is to do with the weight. So if the mass is 8 kilograms, remember the weight is equal to mg. So this is 8 g newtons. That's the force acting, which is the weight. You also have the reaction force because the sledge is in contact with the ground. So that's the reaction, the normal force, which always acts perpendicular to the surface. Then you have a rope. So there's a tension in the rope which is pulling the sledge at an angle of 30 degrees. Um, you also have the friction that's acting because it says it's a rough horizontal ground. So you have friction and because it's moving, it's moving at constant speed, so it's moving, the friction has reached its maximum value. So I'll, put, I'll write that as F max. We also know that the coefficient of friction is equal to one fifth between the ground and the sledge. Um, now, one of the key words in this question is this word here, or this little phrase, constant speed. Now, constant speed means it's not accelerating. The acceleration is equal to zero. Okay, it's moving but not accelerating. It's going at constant speed. So the acceleration is equal to zero. That means the resultant force on this is equal to zero. The force is balanced out on it. So therefore it's going at constant speed so if it was at if it was at rest or it's going at constant speed that means the resultant force is equal to zero that's a key um part of this question here all right now um as it's moving in a horizontal um kind of direction i'm going to resolve the forces in the direction of motion and perpendicular to the direction of motion so i'm going to resolve this tension in the horizontal direction and also in the vertical direction it's very important to do that so you can uh, you know deal with all the forces acting on the system in the right way so the tension if you resolve it in a direction which is going into the angle that's given then that would be using sine so that's t times sine sorry cosine not sine t times cosine 30 so t times cosine 30 and if you're if you're resolving the tension in a direction which is away in a direction which is away from the angle given, then that will be using sine. So that's T times sine 30. It's kind of like if you think about it, you've got a triangle here. You're resolving this force in this direction and that direction. So this would be using the adjacent and the hypotenuse, which is cosine. And this would be using the opposite and the hypotenuse, which is sine, if this angle given. You can think of it like that if you want as well. But it's a very nice, easy, neat way of doing it. If you're going into the angle given, cosine if you're going away from the angle given sine so this out this arrow has to kind of be moving away from the angle given so it's sine into it cosine so now let's resolve the forces in the vertical direction so in the vertical direction if we take up as positive you have r and you also have plus t sine 30 and that's equal to our weight which is 8g okay and if we resolve the forces in the horizontal components um, in the direction of motion which we've drawn in this direction uh, well they've drawn in this direction actually then we can say that uh, t times cosine 30 minus fm equals zero so t times cosine 30 must be the same as the friction okay because the resultant force in this component is equal to zero as well so now what we know also is that f max is mu r okay so the maximum value of friction that can occur in a system 
is equal to mu, which is the coefficient of friction times R, which is the reaction force. Now, as this is moving, F max has occurred. If it wasn't moving and we didn't know that friction had reached its maximum value, then you can't say that it has. All right, so now, what I know now is I know what R is in terms of T, so I can re rearrange this and say R is equal to 8 G minus T times sine 30. And I know what mu is, mu is 1 over 5. So I can say F max is equal to 1 fifth times 8 G minus, now sine 30 is equal to a half, so I'll put this as a half of T. Okay, sine 30 is equal to a half. So now I can say, if I take this, I say t times cosine 30. Now, cosine 30 is root 3 over 2, is equal to f max, which is 1 fifth times 8g minus a half t. So you can see here, I have just one unknown in this equation now. I can find what t is. When I found what t is, I've, I've answered the question. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by 10 to get rid of the fraction. This will give me, if I multiply this side by 10, and this side by 10, this gives me five here. So I'll have five times root three times T equals, if I multiply this side by 10, this gives me two over here. So I'll have two times eight G, which is 16 G minus two times a half T, which is T. If I bring the T's on one side of the equation, I'll have T plus T times five root three equals 16 G. If I take T as common here, I'll have T times one plus 5 root 3 equals 16 g so now i can say t is equal to 16 g divided by 1 plus 5 root 3. i like to keep things in their exact form until the last stage now i can actually put the values in i know g is equal to 9.8 so i can just stick this all into the calculator so i can have 16 times 9.8 divided by 1 plus 5 root 3 and that should give us our answer which is 16.231 16.231 which you can round it to to 2sf as we have used g in our calculations so you could write 16 newtons or if you want you can write it to 3sf 16.2 newtons i normally stick to 3sf because that's acceptable whether you've used g or not they still accept it although strictly 16 is better is the better answer it's strictly because as g we use as 9.8 that's to two significant figures then it, it makes sense that our final answer should be also to two significant figures but there's no problem if you write it to 3sf um as i said when g is not using the calculation then you should write it to 3sf and as 3sf is acceptable in all of those different situations it's probably the safest option in case you forget Okay, so there we have the answer to question number three from this paper, January 2016. Um, other questions from this paper can be found on the playlist that should appear over here. Um, other questions from this topic of uh, dynamics and friction can be found in this um, link over here. Um, for the playlist over there, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link in the middle. Other questions from other papers like M1, uh, P1, P2, P3, P4, S1, and the IGCSE papers um, can be found by looking in the description and clicking the relevant links there. Thank you for watching and see you soon.